a major first step in moving our work forward is to get governments and international institutions to recognize that there is such an issue and to recognize that the illegitimacy of debt is grounds for cancellation of the debts or repudiation of payment of the debts. One of the ways in which we're doing that is for us to work with lawyers such as Professor House in order for our lawyers to help us identify the legal grounds for illegitimacy. He is an author of a paper on illegitimate and odious debt that Ong Tad has commissioned him to do. The fact that he did this paper for Ong Tad is a very clear indication that we have made some progress that Ong Tad as a UN institution has begun to take up this issue. The ultimate foundation in international law is the principle of equity, which has been recognized by the International Court of Justice as a general principle of law and therefore as one of the sources of international law. And there have been a variety of contexts where these kinds of equitable considerations um, have been raised and where the result has been that there has been uh, some uh, uh, non-repayment of debt. In other words, um, really almost no international obligations are absolute. And, and in, in many contexts, uh, you know, equity has been understood to be a basis for limiting or curbing those obligations. In the paper, I prefer not to describe it as such as a doctrine, but as a concept that brings together a number of considerations of what might be called equity and fairness. Uh, that in transitional uh, situations, situations of regime transition, would have a force in international law in giving some justification for the non-repayment of debt. What House is doing is moving the debate forward and basically stating that in cases of transitional justice, invariably issues of economic and fin financial justice ought to come into play. Yung innovative concept ni Professor House, yung concept ng uh, equity at saka yung question of transitional justice naglalagay ito ng isang addition or space doon sa international law on which to base yung legal claims natin why debts that were incurred by the Marcos regime and other governments that really had a very bad impact on the people kung bakit maari nating i-repudiate or disclaim these debts Uh, the World Bank paper has not taken into account uh, what I was just talking about, transitional justice and, and in particular the, uh, the meaning of the rule of law in political transitions from oppressive regimes. And here human rights is, uh, is also an important dimension. At present, there is actually an emerging uh, concept of uh, tying uh, the issue of debt to the issue of, uh, of human rights. For example, the right to uh, an adequate standard of living, which would encompass, for example, housing, health, food, uh, and the like. In fact, uh, the UN has uh, created an office of an independent uh, expert uh, on foreign debt and human rights precisely to study the steps to address the emerging uh, problem of debt in relation to the state's capability to 
educate their human rights obligations. By expanding the concept of audience debt to bring it to human rights, uh, matuturoan itong mga creditors in the future to be very careful about making loans to private individuals or to governments. No?